Hey guys, Major Frenchie, welcome. Today I wanted to talk to you about surround sound feedback for your virtual pinball cabinet. It's a topic that has, uh, well, has gained in popularity in the last little while. It's been going on for, uh, for quite a bit. Now, table developers are including the SSF in the tables, so you don't have to change anything. You don't have to add sounds. You do, it's already pre-coded. So today we're gonna focus on the hardware and how to set it up. So I've uploaded this guide to a couple of websites. It's on my website. It's on VP Forms, also on VP Universe. So there's no reason for you guys not to be able to find this article. So pretty much everything I'm gonna talk about in this video is in the guide, so just feel free to go and follow along as I'm talking if you wish, it's already published. So what is surround sound feedback? Well, it is basically a 7.1 system for your pinball cab. That's what it is. You've got four exciter speakers, which I'm gonna talk about, and you've got uh, a sub, you've got a 2.1 audio, and uh, you basically, you're done. For example, the ball travels in the table, uh, hits a ramp, goes down that ramp, you will hear the noise, and the speaker that's the closest to that ball you will hear the noise coming from that speaker. So it is very nice. Uh, it's good for coin mechanism. It's good for the, uh, the, the contactors. So they called it the poor man's DOF, uh, but there's a link in the article that basically goes to the original site where they describe what the poor man's DOF was. Basically people replaced the contactors and the solenoids with an audio system. So that's what it was. Now, I think it's just a great, great add-on, and uh, it doesn't certainly replaces your contactors and solenoids and shaker, but it adds to the experience a lot. Let's talk about hardware. So, you can see here the exciters. That's what I have. This is not like a normal speaker. It's flat, and it uses a surface to conduct the noise. So, you can actually put that on a wall, on a piece of wood, anything, depending on the surface you will get much different sound based on the surface you're using on. There's actually a video in the article, just uh, feel free to uh, watch this. Uh, this guy is using exciters on a piece of uh, cardboard and shows how to set it up. So it's a pretty good article uh, if you wanna see this. This is how I set it up on my system. I have four. So I got two at the back, two at the front, under the play field. So I have the one on the left, I have the one here on the right. And I have the one here, one on each side. Now I'm using two amps, it's the left and right for each speaker. So this one is for the front, this one is for the back. And it's just a regular speaker wire connection where it's left and right. That's it. The output, the jack, that will go to your sound card, but we'll get back to this. So that's the exciters, and uh, this is the connection uh, that I just explained. The audio amps, you can actually get it from uh, anywhere. I got mine from eBay. Uh, there are different models. There's high-end stuff. Sky's the limit. This works well, and uh, it was fairly cheap. It was like 30 bucks. 2.1 speaker system. Uh, that's just, if you already have a cab, most likely you have this. So you will not have to um, spend more money, you already have it. So this is for the left and right and sub, and I'm gonna show you how it's gonna be connecting on the uh, audio card. Now, the audio card, if you're lucky enough and you already have it on your system, if you're not sure, look in your manual, it will tell you if it's 7.1 compatible. This is mine, this is my motherboard, and uh, if you do not have this and you need to purchase one, you've got two options. The first one is an external USB one uh, like this, and uh, this one is a PCI Express that you would put on your motherboard. They're fairly cheap. Uh, this one's like 35 bucks, so it's a good solution. Uh, it is uh, just a quick um, word of advice. If you wanna set that up for FX3, FX3 only supports one main card, so you will not be able to use multiple cards. This is how I got mine. So I've got the output of my left and right, okay. This is the front, 
So the output goes to my gray, I'll show you in the diagram, but it's my gray connector. The next one, this guy here, it's for the back and the output goes to the blue connector here and my 2.1 which is my regular speakers goes to the green port. So this is what I'm using. I'm only using three ports and I'm going to show you in the software how to deal with this. Now the software, if you, mine was a little complicated because, well not complicated but I had to dig a little bit because it, it, it is on board. I had to go to my motherboards manufacturer and I had to look for that Realtek high def audio driver and install it. And for some reason it wouldn't actually show in my control panel. I had to click the search button and look for Realtek and then the audio center setup would come up, but I'll show you uh, that software when, when we get there. There's a link for the download, so if you click here, uh, it will bring you to the Realtek. If you got a PCI Express or a USB, these would be the, those two would be the different drivers that you would install. Um, so, for example, if I want to load my, my software, uh, I need to click on the search start menu, and if I put real, I, R E A L, it comes up, it says uh, Realtek Audio Controls, and it loads the software. In here, uh, it is not complicated, but there's a, quite a bit of options. If you click on speaker, I did not change any of these settings. You can change them if you wish. It's basically the equalizer to play with the sound, uh, but I did not touch that at all. So this is my setup. I got the, the sub works with the 2.1, the front, left, and right. So these boxes are basically what you need to check and you test the environment just below here. So you will have, for example, if I click the left, see left here, right, center. This is the exciter left, exciter right. This is the front exciter. So this is, yeah, this is how you test your, your ports. And then once you see that everything works in here, you're set. Like it will work in the table. Uh, it will just work with a simple settings that I'm going to show you next. If you go on the advanced below, it says device advanced settings. You can see right here that uh, you have the different colors that are enabled. So here's a quick tip if you Enable that jack detection when device is plugged in. Turn that on. And once you plug your device in here um, at the back, it will pop on your, on your system and it'll say, all right, which port you want it to be. So it's just another way of doing it. But when you look at this, what's enabled is basically highlighted and what's in gray is not uh, enabled. So that's just another... Uh, little settings here. So so the next thing we need to do is you're going to go in your visual pinball folder and open VPX and in VPX you will have uh, to click on preferences, audio and then make sure that on the right here 7.1 is checked and then you select your speaker Realtek audio uh, on both sides here and then you're, you're done. That's all you need to do. And now the uh, tables guys, uh, most of the new ones, they're already coded. So all the uh, table developers have included the sound in the, fi in the files. So you don't have to do anything. It'll work right off the bat. So uh, for example, I'm going to load up. I'm going to load up... Uh, Attack from Mars. Okay. So if you hear, I'm going to turn off this, the table sound. So there, there won't be any sound in the table at all. So, so the only sound you're going to hear are the exciter speakers. So I'm going to add some coins. And you will hear that the, the coin mechanism is basically replaced by the sound hear that? 
That's a that's the actual uh, that's the exciter speakers. I'm gonna start the table. So you can hear the contactors are replaced by the sound on the exciter. Now I'm going to I'm going to press the uh, left flipper you'll hear This is the exciter So you can hear the contactors are replaced by the sound on the exciter. Uh, one thing that I want to show you too is... Now that will work in pinup popper as well. So what I like is when you load up pinup popper Based on if I go left or right, you can hear the exciter buttons. So it's kind of neat. So the sound does not come from the front. It comes from underneath the play field, which is kind of difficult to show with the audio and recording. But uh, trust me, it, it actually sounds really, really good. Uh, it's the alternative, alternative sound. So, for example, when you download a table and there's alternate sound, you can change the sound, the default sound of the table by that sound. So one example I have here, if you go to the visual pin name, and you're gonna see the uh, alternate sound folder, it's the alt sound. If you don't have it, you can create it. And in here, you would paste the sound pack that comes with the table. This is Jurassic Park. So see it has music, sound effects, voices, so that basically is different than the one in the table. And in order to activate these, what you need to do is quite simple. You would just load Visual Pinball. So we're just going to load Jurassic Park. And what happens is, especially if you've got uh, a, like a pinup popper pack, and then you've got kind of the, ta the sound table and the pinup popper pack kind of on top of each other, well, that's how you deal with this alternate sound. So for example, if you have a pinup popper pack, right, and you got the regular sound table, they kind of overlap, right? It's not it's not nice. So it's easy with this, you can just go press F1 once the table is loaded, and you will see that on the right you've got the alt sound mode as 0 to 3. And uh, by default it's 0, pick 1. And then save it, click click OK, reload the table, and you'll see that the uh, sound, the regular sound, will be disabled and you will be using the alternate sound. And finally, uh, the last thing I want to talk about, uh, I'm just going to briefly mention it. It's in the article, and uh, this is uh, SSF for Pinball FX3. So there is um, some description in the article. I'm not going to cover this now because uh, it's it's in the guide and Terry uh, read as a video. Uh, thanks a lot, Terry, by the way, for making this. It, it, what Terry did is he basically coded the uh, tables and then he's got a pinup popper pack for SSF. So what it is, they're basically generic noise sounds for the table and uh, that you need to download and put in the folder. You're going to need a pinup popper player for this to work if you wish to uh, enable that in FX3. So that's it, guys. Now, hopefully you can enjoy this. I just wanted to make this video because some people were overwhelmed, say, oh, man, it's complicated. No, it's not. Uh, trust me, people coding the, 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 the tables with <laughs> surround sound um, feedback is a lot more work than just setting up the hardware. So 
Install this, start enjoying the tables, and thank you for watching.